Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I'm doing That's good. good. I, I think you're a bit more excited than I am um, tonight, but we shall see how this discussion goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm excited to talk about House of the Dragon for sure. Uh, I, of course, we're also going to be talking about Deadpool and Wolverine and then the other big, we're not going to go ahead and stay now, folks. We're not going to do the whole laundry list of San Diego Comic-Con because there's a lot of stuff <laughs> and it yeah. wasn't. A, yeah. So, so we're just going to focus on Marvel tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Marvel and, and the stuff going on as, um, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time between when everything happened I saw Wolverine Deadpool and listening to like Wolverine and Deadpool people thoughts and opinions. And then every, all of the San Diego comic-con Marvel news that come out all of those. Um, so, so I guess to just start with that stuff and check kind of get the, get the, uh, stuff going, um, like Captain America four, We've seen the trailer. I guess there's not, in my opinion, much to say, except like, yeah, we know it's coming in February. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. I mean, I guess uh, John Carlo's character uh, was revealed to be the leader of the Serpent Society, which I know uh, there, I think folks that theorize uh, that trailer. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, if folks, you know, all the all the theorizers and, and whatnot had. Had said that, and of course, I think the fun thing about that panel was this Harrison Ford just hulking out, but <laughs> but yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, and then you got the Thunderbolts. Um, I don't tell me yeah. what what I like need to know about the Thunderbolts. I feel like I already know, but I might have missed something. Um, well, I think you know, honestly, the thing that that particular panel. I, I just remember David Harbour just walking out in the Red Guardian costume. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, just in full disclosure. So, whenever the Marvel panel was going down on Saturday night, I, I was actually doing another Marvel thing and watching Deadpool and, and, and Wolverine. So, uh, so I, I did not see it real time. Uh, so, I, it was really like after the fact. And yeah, because I, yeah. I, I tweeted, I had sent you a DM about RDJ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so funny. I thought you were gonna be no. <laughs> um, no, no, no. We'll see. I'll save my comments for that here in a bit. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess there was a trailer. I guess they showed in Hall H for people, which you know that happens. And uh, I guess I had to see. You know, normally I remember like what well, was Ant Man and the Wasp. I think they or Quantum I think some people like took footage of that and posted it badly on, on the internet, but. I didn't see any of the footage from Thunderbolts. I'm sure it's out there. I just Twitter's just a shit sh- shit show these days with the all the politics and stuff. I just I don't really like spend much time on it anymore. I think people were too obsessed with putting out spoilers for Deadpool Wolverine this weekend. Yeah. Okay. So so that that's at least in a way kind of a silver lining of having that movie come out like San Diego Comic Con weekend. Is I feel mm-hmm. like. I saw a lot more spoilers about that um, mm-hmm. than I did anything about besides the headlines, um, mm-hmm. but no footage really, yeah. which which is fine. I don't I don't need footage. I mean, you guys give yeah. away three fourths of the movie in the trailers anyway, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, ex- exactly. And and like Fantastic Four, very similar, where they're they. They technically, from what I understand, have not started production. So they, but they no. did show like a, a, what would you call it? I guess it was like test footage. Yeah, test footage first look. And I also heard um, this is going to be set in the '60s, like a retro mm-hmm. '60s, and the the art director slash like costumer or set person designer um using very technical terms tonight by the way <laughs> they are the same person behind loki that's right i did hear and, that i did hear that and yeah. as soon as i heard that i was like okay ticket sold <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> <'cause>, 
Go back and listen to our review, our reactions to Loki season one. I raved about the art direction the entire yeah. season, and I do not do that with yeah. every single show. So that is very promising. Um, and and so and between that and also just a reminder, the director is the same director from WandaVision. So again, we had those early episodes like homages to decade television over yep. the years so yep. i mean once you start really wrapping your mind around the potential mm-hmm. i i think i think it's exciting and yeah. and there was of course the big tease for galactus yeah yep galactus and a little and- tease for doom but what a <laughs> Yeah, Galactus. Yeah, Galactus, and also they had the big Fantastic Four too. I guess it like set a Guinness Book of World Record usage of drones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with that, and also we got the title for the film, which is you know, pretty, pretty, pretty stat- Fantastic Four first steps. And uh, yeah, and I think they are. I think they yeah. So basically, like, like you said, the the cast showed up, and then uh, I believe they're starting to film. I think this upcoming week in London. So. Yeah. 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 They, I actually think they are starting this week, but yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. Uh, um, yeah. They are starting, and in a year, we will actually be able to go and see that movie. So that is fun. But, but the big thing, everyone's talking about it. Everyone technically has already talked about it, but now it's been confirmed that not only are the Russo brothers back to direct the next two Avengers movies, Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret War Wars, but Doctor Doom will be played by our DJ. And Will, I'm just gonna let you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to hear your thoughts. That's so you know my thoughts. Really? So. I forgot. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So as I touched on earlier, uh, I I had gone to see Daredevil Wolverine Saturday night, and so I I come out of the theater, and um, you know just uh, you know, started j- jumped on my phone and and uh, saw a message from you uh, with with this news, mm-hmm. and and so I went from feeling very very like i was like i had i had i had i was in i was in good vibes as, as you said uh at the start i was probably more excited tonight to talk about that film than uh than than you are but uh or, or maybe i'm just assuming that but um but when i got when i saw your message i think i, I think i think i messaged you back with the uh sideways face emoji like uh i have mixed feelings about this and i do <laughs> Uh, cause I, you know, I went from like, well, that's really great to like, you know, as far as the movie, having a great feeling to like, Hmm, I just don't know about this. Cause I think I'm on the record when we've there talked about possibilities of him coming back. Um, and it, uh, that it, I always felt that it would just undermine everything that was set up with, with the great send off that they had and, and in, in game. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, so as your it, as your yeah. feelings changed. Nope, not at all. Uh, no, the more, the, even... nope. I'm not. I'm not excited about this. I, I'm really not. I just. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though, I you know, I think as we've gotten a little bit, I think the night of the of the announcement, they did say that is you know Victor Von Doom. Of course, there's so many things out there as far as like the what if comic that had a uh, body swap and you know all these you know the, the various uh potential right right tony tony stark variants yeah. yeah we don't we, we don't know we don't know um, okay yeah. can i okay because because the like there's a reason why we're talking about this last and then gonna go into deadpool and wolverine is because i i find it interesting how um spoiler alert will like the movie more than me <laughs> <laughs> and um and your your criticism about this casting news is that it will undermine the the death of Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. And yet 
within the first five minutes of Deadpool and Wolverine, they they make a point of being like, yeah, yeah, we're not we're we're not really gonna uphold his death, but it's gonna be satisfying to have him back for this <laughs> this leg, and he's still gonna be back. So I guess my point being is that given the new rules of this universe Mm -hmm. especially after deadpool and wolverine i don't i i would have had we had this conversation a month ago i Mm -hmm. i would have totally agreed with you but having watched deadpool and wolverine i'm like that's not the universe that's not the mcu anymore i mean they 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 can do that not only because of that but there's also this little show Loki, technically, the Loki we saw, mm-hmm. not the same one who died. And and by the end of season two, you already forgot <laughs> about, like, the fact yeah. that, like, technically in the movies he dies, but there's this also this other version of him that goes on the side quest and you end up really liking him. Like, I, so, so with those two points. Yeah. I don't I, I I think that 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 I on surface level I get it but but I think I I think you got to have a little bit more trust that some of these uh, writers and directors and especially because like RGJ just loves to show up uh people yeah. and the sad thing is like the big news in my opinion and what's really promising here is that the Russo brothers are back and they like have really wanted to tell secret wars. Yeah. So yeah, they, they, yeah. they're not going to let Feige just say, okay, so we're going to let you do this, but we're also going to bring back our DJ. I have a theory. It was their idea. Yeah. I mean, well, I think, I think you're right. I mean, and you know, I think the, uh, with all the stuff going on with Jonathan Majors, it gave them a, an opening to be able to 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 switch gears because the multiverse stuff hasn't has been mixed at best. Um, and keep yeah, going. Oh, yeah, I was so, going to say switch gears, but also not completely, because I know it's not been confirmed what scenario, how this will all work and make mm-hmm. sense, but in a way. It's also like we're we know we started something and we haven't fully finished it. Yeah. But we're also gonna bleed in into something bigger that'll have a much more satisfying ending. So so it's a it's kind of a good good way of being like we can't completely throw out everything we've started, but we right. can definitely course correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's, there is that. I mean, I think the thing with the with Victor Von Doom, and I, I, I do think that it's going to be Robert Downey Jr. playing a new character. I, at the end of the day, I don't. And it's just me talking, and I haven't read all the comics and all the theories and and whatnot. But I do think that, and I think even Marvel has has said look he is you know he he is victor von doom he's not a tony variant and and then you know and then maybe they'll explain why he looks very similar in you know to to tony stark you know within the story um i mean because i because you know this is not the first time they have like used actors before i mean michelle yo it was um i think in guardians of the galaxy and then she showed up in eternals and uh, Jimmy Chan's another person. I mean, but again, they weren't like the leads. They were just, you know, actors who've played different characters within the MCU. Uh, so I think they they may. Really they, hope they don't. I'm just going to go on record. I really hope they don't do what you're saying you think they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. That's I don't know if they will just ignore it and just like, you know, he's just a that, fresh that character. Mean? It wouldn't make any sense to me because of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. Like it just like to ignore it, to do it is one thing, like having to do it pre multiverse saga. Sure. Sure. Totally understand that. Whatever. But 
to do it, ignore it and not try to use multiverse to make it make. I don't know. To me, that doesn't yeah. make sense. And I want um, something also to point out is Doomsday is in Dr. Doom colors, the poster, yeah. the mm -hmm. logo. And then um, Secret Wars is Tony Stark colors. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's so I think maybe what what you're picking up on is for a movie, we'll get Va like Victor Von Doom, but we're gonna get Tony. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it. Yeah, well, then if you're gonna do stunt casting, then let's just bring in Tom Cruise to play Tony Stark. <laughs> you know, you know, like Matt Damon found himself, like just managed to get himself into these movies. So why not? Why not? Like, I mean, if we're gonna throw eighty million dollars at the Russo brothers, and uh, you know, I think Downey, I think, but I think he's getting fifty million a piece for these films. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so. And, and and it's not against Robert Downey Jr. I I he's a wonderful actor and he will definitely bring a different element to this. But it's just going to be I, you know even though he's a fantastic actor, it's going to be hard for me. I mean to like to switch gears and be like oh this is a different character even though it, because it's just I don't know it's just. It's not like a comic book where I can like switch gears like that. It's like I, I, I was thinking about it. it. Like I don't know if I said it to you or I was talking to someone else, but it's like if it, it, bringing in Star Trek here, it's like if you brought William Shatner into like you know he played Kirk, and then in the next film he's like Khan. I mean it's just like going from hero to villain, and I'm just like it, they're just so iconic in in the roles that they inhabited in that uni that universe. That it's just very hard for me to like to to get over it, and it does just it does just reek to me of and kind of what Deadpool and Wolverine in, in his own kind of way was like poking fun at Marvel's, you know, they even called it out in the film as far as their their, their desperation, and it just it just reeks of this we are just going back to going back to the hits that we know right. will work, and, there, and there's no guarantee that. Yes, you know, the Russo brothers, yeah, they did a wonderful job, but that was a long time. That was many years ago, and some of their projects ever since have not been so good. And, and you know, the, you know, the genre is at a place now where, yeah, it, you know, people still like comic book movies and stuff, but, you know, it's not 2018 you know, or 2019 when these films came out. So the landscape is totally different now. And so there's no guarantee that that lightning is going to get captured in the bottle again. Yeah, but that's with anything. Like if you yeah. if they were to hire new new directors, it would be very similar. Like, well, we'll see. I mean, like there there is no guarantee, but you can yeah. apply that to virtually anything. And yeah, anything. I mean, look at, yeah, look at Star Wars. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I would. Initially, I would agree desperation, yeah. but upon thinking about it and hearing the price tag, I don't know if it's desperation because <laughs> these movies aren't yeah. doing that bad. They're not. They're not. <laughs> to, I mean, just to, artistically. To then, there. like, put all of this money, like, yeah. I don't know. I don't like desperation is a very strong word, and I, I just, I, I don't. It's. I mean, come on! It's not like they're they're in the place where the DCU <laughs> was. Oh year. yeah, <laughs> like no, yeah. No, like true. it, and this this has a hefty price tag. So I, yeah. I don't know. Like yeah. we're not in the rooms. We're not we're not behind the scenes. And honestly, we don't want to be because we want to just go to the movies and let the story take over. Yeah. I think that initial reaction and discussion has been very fascinating um some of the best discourse i've heard come out of an announcement mm -hmm. at any type of these events um in a very long time not because of the excitement but because of the honest like let's have a chat about this let's have a chat about the state of the genre let's have a a chat about like these characters and the storylines and what's working and what's not. And I think I, I and that is what's more intriguing mm -hmm. um, than just 
I mean, the sad thing is if they had cast somebody new, it'd just be like, okay, well, what have they done before? We'll see. Yeah. When when now it's a very different conversation, and I think it's a far more interesting conversation. So I'm just happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I oh, I completely agree. I completely agree. And um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think I even told you, I was like, you know, you, if, you know, we, you'll have the receipts if I'm like gushing in 20 in May of 2026 and 2027 when we're watching these two films and actually even like I guess even next year when Fantastic Four drops yeah, and well, you know, it'll we, be we, teased at least yeah well you know we'll get the end credit with you know with him introduced and and I guess that's the other thing too I guess you know looking at the earlier phases uh with like the Thanos with the whole build up I I guess uh, you know, by the time we got to in Infinity War and Endgame, we had we had three phases under us, and there was just you know ten years of build up and stuff. So they're going to have to just manufacture that level of intensity, which you know I think you know casting Robert Downey Jr. definitely gets you at already probably at, at level seven. So uh, well, especially if it's a Stark variant. Yeah. Or or if Stark has always been a variant of Doom. Mm -hmm. yeah like so like yeah. that's another way to do it is yeah. like like tony stark was unique for our planet but mm -hmm. yeah. or, or he was our anchor <laughs> yeah yeah they, i mean that's the thing i mean you're right i mean the thing the anchor the whole concept of anchor beans i mean you know and, and you you made an excellent point too with, with uh with the with the vibe from loki and, and fantastic four but also just loki doing the reset um it, you know, at the end of season two with the whole multiverse, yeah. uh, we, we, all that, all that we've known up to this point, um, is can, can really, it can be t twisted and turned inside out, but, um, you know, I guess but it's just it for me to, it, it doesn't negate yeah. anything that has come before. No, no, we know that. Though they, they did it in a way where those are like, consolidated stories and yeah. Yeah. phases and of itself but yeah it's <laughs> again i think it's perfect timing mm -hmm. for marvel which uh, the one more thing i want to just point out too is that um we've talked about a lot of the marvel announcements but there are two dates from what i understand on the calendar that and i think one is before right before the first Doomsday comes out, and then one in between Doomsday and Secret Wars that they did not have not announced what mm -hmm. will occur. Um, and then, of course, we're, we're between now and Secret Wars, there's going to be a new Spider-Man, but Spider-Man doesn't count because it's Sony Project. So, so I, I, I think even Disney or Feige was just like we've. We've gone both directions on this where we've held back and just did everything for D23. And then we've done the other end where we've given everything and announced things that honestly never came true. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into a few of those shortly. But but yeah, and so they've made very purposeful announcements and and like build of excitement for projects that are definitely going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then they also kept some things that to, to, to share later. So, yeah. yeah. Now is one of those, one of those dates is that held for Thunderbolts by chance? No, okay. no. Okay. It's, I can't it's remember. A, they're unnamed Marvel projects from okay. what I okay. understand. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's two. It could be three, but there's one right before Doomsday, and there's one in between the two Avengers. Speculation is uh, uh, Doctor Strange three, and yeah. Kung Chi. Kung Chi. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah. think that's all. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, I know, Iger like, I know they were definitely throwing back on a lot of the television production and 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 only doing well i think Iger was what two maybe three films a year so you know so i i i wonder if those dates will get shuffled around um 
given given the new new <laughs> focus that they're trying to you know pull back some of the to, you know sp- the spread these projects out to get you know get the artistic <laughs> levels back to where it used to be oh oh yeah i'm i'm all about spreading projects out but at the same time if there's we're telling a much larger story here i mean yeah. you said it yourself we're yeah. they're going to have to manufacture some some um yeah. decades worth of stories so yeah yeah especially um, when you have 67 characters show up in uh, show up in a secret <laughs> war so <laughs> i i feel like we we had at least 50 show up in like the final fight scene in endgame so yeah we did <laughs> a lot yeah. of characters guys yeah yeah there's been a lot yeah yeah that's your point about budget yeah they, they're not going to spare any expense <laughs> yeah. yeah all right so so deadpool i i guess i'm just gonna start with um my opening thought and it took me a while to come to this realization my theory is that because it dawned on me earlier today what our first reactions were to the trailer for this movie. (laughs) I I vaguely remember, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You made a comment. You're like, I just, they, they kept saying the F word, like over religiously. Yep. Um, now, now, and me, I was like, Oh, I did not notice that at all. I noticed that throughout the entire movie. I just, there was something Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. I enjoyed myself. I had a smile on the full time. Yeah. Now, emphasis on smile on my face the full time. Mm-hmm. When you're sitting in a movie theater and clearly jokes are hitting because you suddenly start to hear the laughter mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, like I understood, but but I just for some reason the jokes were not hitting me. Like they, I don't know what it was. I I think I was just in a bad mood that day. Honestly, I did not go to the theater like with the met, right mental headspace. Mm-hmm. I will give it that. So so take what I what I say with a grain of salt. I I know it was funny, <laughs> but at the same time, I can't lie to y'all. I really don't know when I actually fully laughed at anything. Mm-hmm. Um. And and it's not that the humor was very it's like the sexual stuff. No, I think I might have laughed at a few of those. But I just I don't know. There was something where I just I never fully got lost in the story. Yeah, yeah. And it and was and it, it was. I I am one of those people who's just like there just was way too many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, see, it's funny that you bring that up because actually, I thought about our conversation too in the first with that op- with the <laughs> opening scene, <laughs> and I remember I was, I, and I and I remember our reaction to that first to the trailer, and I were, and to, you're right, I did say that all the f bombs, and then the other thing is, I felt like they were trying too hard. Yeah. And so my initially when the film first started, I, I was, I wasn't, I I did, I I was, you know, it took me a while to get into that, into the groove of it because I did feel like, oh man, they're trying too damn hard. They really are trying too damn hard, uh, with, with, with that opening credit. And, uh, you know, they did like, you know, to, not to go back to our discussion about RDH, RDJ. I mean, they did try to honor what happened in Logan and, mm-hmm. you know, and they, and they did address it. That's like, look, you know, we, this, this, to the story's credit, they did just say, look, this, this Wolverine's a variant. Uh, he's not the Logan that we, you saw in, you know, James Mangold's film, uh, when we said goodbye to that character years ago. Right. Right. Um, so there so i did appreciate that because i was wondering how they were going to tackle that um but the the humor that with the tva and all that stuff now that piece did not hit for me and i felt like it went a bit long Mm -hmm. but once it got into the tva and and it once it got into the story and you know some of the meta jokes and i just i love meta humor humor so 
so I had a, I had several just laugh out loud moments. Uh, you know, like um, you know, like one that still sticks out to me that's right off my head is the whole Jennifer Garner <laughs> and the Ben Affleck uh, joke. Um, and as far as the, with the whole Daredevil movie and um, yeah, that, and, that and, and, and 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 the Blade and obviously the Blade one. I mean, I, I think the Blade one was the one where I, I was just like I'm off on the floor. Um, but 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 it was interesting. It was interesting in the, my theater because it was a and I don't know if it was like in yours where it was a real cross section of like people. So you had younger folk, you had millennials and Gen Zers, you had Gen Xers like me, and so like a lot of the humor for me as a Gen Xer and just remembering those Marvel films like when I was in my like twenties, um, it hit for me. And maybe that's maybe I was that 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 that. It was a four quadrant film, I think. And so some things hit for some people, some things didn't. And for you, it just you, you like you said, you had a smile on your face, but some of it just it was kind of like. Eh. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's like I I I want to be, be clear um, because I think sometimes when we talk about humor and we say things hit and things don't hit, it doesn't necessarily mean you didn't understand the joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's just more like, for whatever reason, either the way, the way it was said, the way it was executed, the way, um, the punchline, it just did not like make me laugh out loud. It Mm. was more like, okay, uh uh-huh, I got it. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Like, I will admit the one joke that a lot of people have talked about, and you even brought it up that I didn't know know anything about or the implications around was mainly the blade joke. I didn't I forgot honestly Ryan Reynolds was ever in Blade because I never saw that last movie. Yeah. Um and I definitely did not know the history between the two actors. Yeah. So I mean I think the some of the funniest stuff came from Channing Tatum because oh, yeah. yeah. Because and and that that worked. But yeah. But I also, it didn't work because I was just like Deadpool, where I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I was part of it, understand. too. So, and yeah, so I think for me, like, the, the Channing Tatum stuff worked for a couple of reasons. For like, you know, I liked it one just because I know we didn't, I know we haven't spent hardly any time talking about it here on the podcast, but I just do know, like, all how. For years, he was like before John Krasinski as Reed Richards. It was Channing Tatum and, G- and Gambit, you know. <laughs> I felt I felt like we talked a lot about this Gambit movie. Yeah. I remember, okay. like I'm pretty sure, and I could have just made this up in my head. He came out of stage at San Diego Comic Con 2019, like okay, the same maybe. year they announced Mahershala Ali. This was a legit thing. I like like oh, yeah. and that's I guess why I forgot that. Yeah. Things those jokes worked for me. It's just that towards mm. the end of it, I, I was just like Deadpool. And I'm like, I don't understand. And, and they've done that <laughs> three times, but okay. I, I think it's, hmm. And, and, you know, I like meta humor. So it's, yeah, it's not like yeah. I don't because we watch the boys. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it just felt like it was the same jokes again and again like i don't know why but i just was tired by the end of it i'm like you've only made a very like like talk about multiverse (laughs) in my opinion and i i have i've only watched this movie once um and i know i am in the minority on this but for whatever reason like maybe this was done on purpose but it felt like all of the jokes we're just variants of the same meta jokes. Like, yeah. and I'm like, again and again. So maybe there is some underlining joke on that. Which mm-hmm. is, I think it was. Okay. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I, I did not sign up for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, I think that, that's part of the, I think that was part of it, Sarah. You, you nailed it. I mean, I think that's part of what was so, to me, what was sort of the genius of that, of that film. Um, and cause I wasn't going into it, honestly, I had, so, I had high expect, I, I had high expectations of being entertained, which I was, 
But mm-hmm. as far as it being like carrying anything forward, as far as the MCU and everything else, I was just sort of like, let me just, you know, let me just see what happens. And I, you know, and, and I think, you know, I did, you know, and we, we, we were talking about was it last week with the X-23 spoiler, uh, now that mm-hmm. we've watched it, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't see the trailer, but, um, I, you know, saw that trending on Twitter and I was like, God damn it. So, but, you know, but at the same time, I was super, whenever, whenever Wesley Snipes showed up on screen, uh, and you know, that, that one, that I, I was, for me, that was just like, again, my Gen Xer, you know, remembering going back, remembering watching that, mo- the first Blade movie. Uh, so good. I, so okay. good. So good, and then, and then of course the other, not only the jokes that he and Ryan were like exchanging, but the the, the line where he was just like, "I'm the only blade." Yes, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, I mean that was that was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. Be, partly because Deadpool did not technically respond. <laughs> yeah, and I was exactly. Like, Finally, like that was another thing. <laughs> yeah. I, for a while, I was just like Wolverine, where I'm like, dude let other people have some freaking lines and so i'm watching the movie i last week for those who listen no i had no idea what will was talking about when he alluded to this infamous spoiler so i did spend and maybe this was to my enjoyment like um hindered my enjoyment of the at least the first two-thirds of the movie but i was trying to be on lookout for like what the heck was will talking about now, now rewind to the night before I went because I went on a Sunday and um, Saturday <laughs> I'm on TikTok and uh, the Chris Evans um, oh, showing yeah. up as not as Captain America but as Johnny Storm mm-hmm. got ruined for me. Uh, I'm bad. in the theater, that part comes, and I'm like, this had better been the spoiler because, and that is effed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then. <laughs> That, I'm sorry that got ruined for because that that was no, that was wait, one wait, of those that was another one of those fours. I was like, they, I was like, they got me. <laughs> but but like but fast forward to when X23 shows up and my mind's just like, yeah, cool, cool, all right, all right. And then I asked Will what the spoiler were, and he's like X23, and I'm like, I I thought I thought that was a known thing. <laughs> I was not surprised when she showed up. Like, yeah, that, that was, was the known thing because they spoiled it. They, they, they killed that scene. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But let me finish. I was not spoiled. Uh, yet the scene did not affect me in any way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so the reveal did not work. And yet it was technically a reveal for me. I yeah. am done. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hear you. Uh, I think that. Well, well, with all the other, by the time she does walk out, so, so for me, it was like it got ruined because I saw it on Twitter. Um, maybe, you know, but but for you, it didn't, you know, you, you got ruined by the Johnny Storm. But I would have been pissed if I had seen that Chris Evans was in there as Johnny Storm. Uh, and that got spoiled for me. I, I was very good. I was very lucky that it didn't get hit, spoiled by any of the other other appearances. And, of course, uh, you know, Henry Cavill. Uh, we cannot we cannot go tonight without talking about uh, that him showing up and uh, in in the film, which was a uh, you know nice nice little little thing there to, to have fun at, have fun at DC's expense there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah they they made a movie. Uh, Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, chemistry great. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was good. I just, I think it's, um, for our long-time listeners, go back and re-listen to some of our reactions to maybe not this season of The Boys, but maybe, like, the m- previous season. Yeah. And then compare reactions to our reactions, because a part of me... I feel like we did some role reversal here. <laughs> like I'm in a different universe. <laughs> because yeah. I, I don't know. I, I I feel myself thinking some of the criticism that you've had about some of the boys' humor or some of the other shows that 
maybe even Doom Patrol I'll throw out there that slide into this very like dark humor. And 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 I just feel like I'm like, wow, wow, I am seeing Deadpool Wolverine through Will's eyes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he fortunately saw it through mine. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, it happens. It happens. It, it, it does. I mean, I mean, hey, hey, if only you had, we had done this when we went to go see uh, Thor Love and Thunder, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Off of that, a different universe. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, for sure, for sure. Any any other big things you want to you wanna talk about? Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine? Um, just the only other thing is, I think the other, th- the one story thing that did kind of work for me was just sort of the recurring theme of the Deadpool with Wade just trying to find his place of belonging. Uh, I, I did, I did think that worked. That worked for me in the story too. So again, um, beyond the jokes, I mean, the jokes were great, but, uh, and I know some people say it's a paper thin plot and it, and it is, but I mean, I, you know. I wasn't going to watch this movie for the plot. You nailed it. It was like we were we were going to see Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman just you know yuck it up for two hours because they just have incredible chemistry. Right. I I agree. I guess I wouldn't say it's paper thin plot. It's paper thin character development mm-hmm. because. Yeah, it was. There was so much just the whether whether it was the joke fest or the meta jokes or or the just the continuous fighting people who regenerate like like that's cool. Maybe maybe one. But no, I feel like we at least got three sequences of that. Maybe two and a half. Yeah. But. But to, so so it just it, and then to have like these brief glimmers. I'm gonna be honest. I love Hugh Jackman. I love his portrayal of Wolverine. I love his portrayal Logan. Great. For whatever reason, when when Nova went into his head, and then we had those scenes. Like those scenes did not work for me because I was just like. I'm not attached to this version of Wolverine at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and then even with Wade and like I thought it was interesting at the beginning with the scene with Happy and I felt bad for him. But we were we spent so much time uh, away from his friends and the people he's trying to protect mm-hmm. and him and Vanessa are not even together. Yeah, yeah. What was that? That like, I mean, at least in the second Deadpool, she she was dead and he was trying to get vengeance. I don't know. There was just some weird choices where I I, I guess I agree. Like he shouldn't go into this movie wanting like deep plot, but I expected more from the characters themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. That's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. All right. So. Another role reversal reaction, but this people should see coming because this has been this way for this entire season. Will likes House of Dragon right now way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I like not, I know it's a good show. Don't twist my words. I'm still this is one of the best shows on TV. I totally understand that. That being said. I'm very curious as about the deep discussion Will wants to have because I'm like, eh, I, I don't. Things happened, and some of the conversations were cool, but I don't know. It just felt like let's get to the finale, <laughs> <laughs> I, and that will lead to a whole other point of this whole season has been, okay, let's actually have the war start. I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired of this like dance of the dragons has begun has it has it i understand renice died i get it but still like i feel like we've just been we've just this has just been uh i don't know i don't know pillow talk okay Uh, this this isn't the big thing but but go ahead will (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I, I, so it's to, to paraphrase Masaria, there's more, way, more than one, and I think I said this last week, there's more than one way to tell a war story. And I just, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. We, I think we had the same thing happen with us with, with Shogun this, this season two, with two of the best shows on television this year. And, um, where I think, my level of excitement is a little, a little higher than yours. Uh, I'm not that I agree. You, you definitely do like the show. It's not that you don't, but, uh, I, I, I just felt that this week's episode really was a good pay. It was a, a further payoff of, of the story of the small folk and also just the overarching absurdity of why we're having you know why why is king's landing and westeros getting destroyed over over a family squabble that um over 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 a crown that you know the daemon himself whenever he's having these visions of of viserys is like heavy as the head you know, has to carry this crown and it just crushes you so i mean it's just and, and i think what this episode did for me was just really uh, w- one of the one of the things that stood out with with the discussion with with Team Black uh, in particular was uh, as they were were trying to get the put the all call out to execute Jace's plan, even though you know we saw the the, the failure of it last week. It, uh, it you know, we you know we're seeing how the how how really how intelligent the dragons are as far as you know who's really in control here is this is it the people or is it is it the dragons and 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 and, and the whole political the whole juxtaposition of the you know the common folk the small folk and 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 the highborn well class. yeah yeah like i before before you continue to go on uh, and then we have to circle back i don't want to get too too yeah. far, um, far from this is um like i knew you were going to bring up this conversation because it is one of the best parts of this episode mm-hmm. uh, is the conversation between J- jace and his mom yeah because like let's not mistake jace has actually brought this idea to her and mm-hmm. now his realization, the moment that Adam comes to Dragonstone and is lowborn, suddenly he's a dragon. So therefore, like nobody says it, he's a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. like there's there's no way. And and then I I really it's a great moment because it's something, a conversation that these two characters clearly have never had mm-hmm. and never had to have. But the acknowledgement of him acknowledging like who his father is to her. Um, my only quibble is I wish, I wish there was more she said in response, yeah. but I don't think, I think she was completely caught off guard. But at the same time, she's absolutely right because she's like, I'm sorry. I love you. I, I can I can see where you're coming from, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. Yeah. And and let's not mistake, you've pointed out the little choice I've had. So we're gonna yeah. stick with this and we're mm-hmm. gonna kill some people while doing it because there ain't no way all of them are going to survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and and it's and it's true. I I think that that was a very good and she herself even had a problem at I believe at some point in this episode with like this idea that mm-hmm. n- that the people who are no longer part of the bloodline can suddenly be dragon riders. Yeah. And then I love I love Maris's like response to and it's just like, aren't you fighting your brother? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I like nailed it. Yeah, uh, that's what I love that scene. No, I know, and it's because you're talking about not only blood, which honestly, blood does ble- um, bring a sense of loyalty, but mm-hmm. in this universe and in specifically for this family, 
power is heavier than the blood itself. Yeah. And and so 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 any if you go to Starks, Starks like, oh yeah, it's all about the blood. But mm-hmm. and the loyalty there for their family and that. Okay? T- the Lannisters coin. <laughs> <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> but, but I, and I, I, I think that's good. Um, you're, you brought up the, um, the payoff of the small folk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong when you say that. But my only problem is, is that like, well, duh, we've been knowing that that was going to happen. Like, Adam just got a dragon. You think that the other people we randomly have been introduced to are not going to get a dragon? Like, like we knew that. And and I and I have been on TikTok and I have seen information about the lineage and more importantly the dragons they both Ulf and um and Hugh end up with yeah. and how if only there was a way to have explained that over the season because i think i think the fact that um hugh yeah. ends up with G- king jesseris's uh dragon yeah jesseris is the father of H- hugh's mom yeah who he he disgraced and and just threw out and she became a prostitute yeah well, yeah. yeah he he yeah. abandoned he disowned her or something and, yeah. and King Jaharis is the former king before Viserys. So, so like choices were made, and he probably disowned her because only heir female goodbye. So, so the fact that he ends up with with that dragon, but what like that that is such a fascinating thing. But I only know that because I was on TikTok. <laughs> No, it was in the episode. I mean, he. I mean, he. I mean, who did no, no, say? No, no, no. The fact that just he did not. He he explained like you. My point is okay. I I know he explained kind of and alluded to his mom was, but he didn't outright like clearly say. And 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 I'm sorry. You've met the Targaryens. Like there are fifteen people named Jesteris. I I I don't feel like he ever really talked about him. No, but he did say. I mean, he basically. I mean, as far as like, I mean, I, I know with I know with Ulaf, they were very they were more, very clear that he was a, a bastard of Balin. Yes. Because um, he you know because Balin's is a uh, Daemon and Viserys' father. I actually, I actually did print out my. I've been talking about it all season. I finally did. I finally did like put out the family tree for the for this show because keeping track of all these Aegons and Viserys yeah. and Viserys. Yeah, I actually yeah. did pencil. I, I, and I did. I, I was aware too, as far as um, I guess Balon was. Um, I guess Sarah was his his wife, at least as far as the TV show. Um, and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I mean, excuse me, his other daughter, excuse me, I'm looking at my, I had to pencil that one in because she hadn't been added to the, uh, the family tree line <laughs> with the chart that I have here. It only goes up through episode six. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Jacera, uh, Jeff Harris's daughter that you, that you referenced being a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, his mother, but, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you there that it did, they, they, you know, he did say he, that. You know, he had he had a silver haired mother, which uh, you know clearly makes you know very clear that uh, she's a Targaryens, and, and Targaryens love to fuck, whether it's men 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 or women in the in the in the family. They they all are they all have little bastards running around all throughout Westeros. Um, but They're um, so yeah, and I thought like, yeah, for sure, yeah, look at Corlys. <laughs> well, 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 Corlys, yeah, but I um. And watching this episode and even talking about it, I mean, the strong points of this episode are talking about, like, the quote-unquote bastard storylines. And Mm -hmm. if uh, going back to Game of Thrones, Jon freaking Snow was a bastard. Right, right. 
(laughs) (laughs) and and not and so it's it's interesting how the this these shows and this universe it's all about the power and it's Mm -hmm. all about lineage and legacy and all of that and yet some of the characters who end up being our heroes and our protagonists are bastards Mm -hmm. and um which is so interesting when you're talking about a story that delves deep into family and power yeah. um and and I mean you brought up before Damon's vision in this episode and it's a vision of um Viserys again um but the Viserys that we kind of ended on and and it I think this is the first scene I would argue or the first vision scene that it's very clear of why why they're showing this because it happens right after he really has his first like we damon's kind of a quote older gentleman at mm-hmm. this point yeah but this is the first time when he's clearly put in a political position yeah. of power and has to make a decision to to Agree with Oscar, which shout out to that kid because that yeah. kid some impressive acting yep. and just just really owned that whole scene and the fact that he's like playing off of off of Matt Smith. I mean, just hats off to him. Bravo. For sure. Yeah. Um, but to then have Damon have to sacrifice that guy who basically was his only ally in the Riverlands and then be like, yeah, I told you to do that. So now you're going to pay for my sins because I have to agree with these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Can't. I can't. His is like, yep, I got it. Yeah. I don't. Oh, yeah. I, I need but the swords. <laughs> it's telling that then he immediately goes into this vision with Viserys and Viserys like, now that you've experienced this side of things where this power leads you to actually kill those allies Mm -hmm. for political reasons like it's not are you sure this is what you want i i really like that i i feel like up until this point the visions i agree have been a bit like vision for vision's sake (laughs) Mm. Um, well, I think I, I disagree with you there. I mean, because to your point, those earlier visions, the, the payoff comes with what we what Damon experiences in this episode, which you just shared. I don't know. I don't I, I don't think that that's true. I feel like the payoff is within the episode that they occur because they and and it's it. I don't think those visions necessarily build up to this. I mean, all the visions are are a a visualization of the internal demons that are going on, this internal war that is happening within him, um, partly under the wizardy of Alice. Yeah. Um, so it's it's basically like he's on mushrooms. Yeah. And he's going through a grieving process. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <I would agree>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think what I was saying, what I was trying to um, articulate was maybe not visions for vision's sake, but I felt like they were getting a bit too long mm. and just a bit too. You kind of already knew that. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. really want to see you have sex with your dead mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit much. <laughs> I like how they revealed that at the very end and like now we'll let the viewers leave and it's just like, "Whoa, what did I just spend 5 minutes watching?" So, yeah. I, I like I I'm glad that we didn't spend too much time with Damon in this episode just yeah, because I, I feel like he's on such he's been on such a different story. Mhm that sometimes it takes me out of what else is going on but arguably this episode the person who 
I have no idea what was I I know what was going on with her but at the same time I'm like what are we doing <laughs> what is happening here why couldn't you just let Olivia Cook take the day off <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um is is the whole cleaning of Allison and yeah. it's just, I don't know if if that was time well spent I think we could have spent time with some other characters like B- Bela Right, Bela, who's at mm-hmm. the eatery. She, yeah, yeah. we, we get Hugh. Every all of the male small folk get get a dragon before Bela. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert: Bela is gonna get the biggest one. But come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I I agree with you with Allison. Uh, I mean, whenever the, the funniest thing about that scene, the scenes with Allison was whenever uh, Sir uh, the night that was with her, I can't remember his name, but. Uh, <laughs> When I heard that voice, I immediately thought of One Piece because he was Luffy, Luffy's grandpa. Oh, smart. Yeah, I did not. I, I totally have not. Which <laughs> they've started filming. Yeah, yeah. Season two, so. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that voice. I was like, that voice is so familiar. And I, like, I did go, I was like, I think that's the guy from One, Pl- One Piece. And sure enough, I looked with IMDb and it was, but I digress. But I agree. And, it, and it, honestly, that's that's it shows you how much I was invested with what was going on with Allison in this episode. You and me both. I was like, yeah. Allison has been, has been so interesting to me throughout this season. Um, but, but this was not. <laughs> this yeah. was like... What and it's and it's it's not because of Louis Cook. It's no, no. You you also the 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 rats like all that was cool. But when you have a a section like this, all I can think about is especially as we continue to just get taunted with this dance of the dragons. Is can't we spend it with some other characters? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can well, I I there there are because there's some really interesting things going on, especially on Team Green. I mean Aegon, yeah. um Aegon this Aegon and Laris, which to kind of go back a little bit to to my whole point about the bastards and those disabled individuals. I mean mm-hmm. he, he's not technically disabled, but Tyrion Lannister, one of the most popular characters in all of Game of Thrones. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Midget. And yep. and yep. and yet and now we have Lars, who Lars is is not. I'm not comparing him to T- Tyrion at all. But at the same time, he he's handicapped, and mm-hmm. now he's kind of. I don't know if this is the right word, but grooming Aegon and trying to get him up and going yeah, because yeah. they can be allies um, yeah, against yeah. Aemond. And it's and it, there's some interesting things happening there. But I also wonder if I find that that's appealing because they're they're telling it at the right pace. We're not getting too much, but we're also not getting too little. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, the rehab that he was that he's been doing with Aegon, uh, and especially when, when we, we we're seeing that happen, but then also whenever they learn about uh, Adam taking um, yeah. sea smoke and yep. the whole conversation, and so and I love the way they played that scene because on the one hand it was sort of like, is was Laris like not you know it was like the game of telephone whenever the guy was telling him about it <laughs> he was like but or or you know so was laris like didn't want to tell amen about it because he just didn't trust it or to your you know to what we we're just discussing was he you know because he is helping Aegon rehabilitate from his injuries he he, he doesn't want a- amen to know so that if by some chance they right. are out there in the field of battle uh, Aemon you know, may get slain by you know the, the the increasing number of dragons on Team Black. Well, Aegon or Aemon, he at this point is thinking he still has the advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, which which and and I agree with you. Um, 
that scene was well executed because you can't nobody fully knows except for mm-hmm. the writers and the showrunner and yep. the actor um but nobody else <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> the viewers are left questioning questioning if Lars believes it or not and and right. i i agree that's that's a very well acted scene and and written too yeah um i don't because i don't even know coming yeah, from about like like hmm. because at first he's like huh but then he, when he figures out this game of telephone it's like i don't know like it's a yeah. hard thing to know uh, to believe unless you until you see it and then you get the yeah. shot of Ulf coming in on Silverwing, which initially i was like oh if you freaking idiot like you're telling me you f- you managed to find yourself with the dragon and you go to King's Landing. Yeah. Also, again, this episode just proved a complaint I've had since what episode one. Like, why are these two places so close together? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've seen they are relatively close because I know we because even like with the plan of getting the small folk. But they put the call out to to the Targaryen bastards to yeah. go, go to Dragonstone. You know, Alan was a part of that. You know, they, they did a quick little shot there of him helping to execute that plan. So it was just like, yeah, you know, and, you know, with the boats, you know, I, I, I do. I, I, I know Dragonstone and King's Landing are relative neighbors, but, you know, I, I need to look at a map of Westeros to see, like, the scale. Because I've seen things, I've seen people say anything from, like, 50 miles to, like, to 400. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if, if listeners, if you have a, if you could, like, point us out to a good source that uh, tells us how far they are in relation, apart from, in relation to one another, we would greatly appreciate that. Yeah. What yeah. what were you, what were your thoughts when you saw Ulf um take Silverwing to King's Landing? Oh, that, that was that that probably would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in his defense, he he can't really drive. <laughs> he can't drive. He just hit the lottery, you know. Uh, especially because because you know because he even what I liked about it was he whenever they were in King's Landing and and they were all sitting in a bar, he was starting to doubt. You know, he was questioning whether or not he even like was a a Targaryen, you know, bastard, and 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 so whenever he, whenever the whole scene with the whole red sewing uh, played out, so I guess anything that has red in their title, I guess <laughs> expect a lot of <laughs> expect a lot of death <laughs> in dramatic fashion uh, with this show. Um, Whenever that all went down in the in the hold with uh, Vermithor, uh, and then he like falls down and you know comes across uh, uh, was it Silverwing, that uh, yeah it it, it uh, I, I like the way they, they they did that and then his reaction of just like I'm just gonna take a joyride with this thing um, was 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 what I, well, like I said it's something I would do if I if I hit the right. lottery and like one I- dragon yeah. I I'm just I question um, because at the end, like Eamon does fly out after him yeah. um, and comes upon Dragonstone. And you have Reyna already standing out there. And to me, I think the intent is to left, leave the viewers with no, that was an intentional joyride. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, See, I, think- I do. There was something on her face, like she she was not just standing out there for the sake of it. No, she. She knew, like to me, because they also had another dragon, like multiple dragons behind behind yeah. her. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It was it felt more like, oh, you came here. That's nice. I got a few of these now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, you're right. That it could it, it it very well could have been planned. You're right. But I know. But it's funny with that scene too, because when Aben saw those other dragons standing there in Dragonstone and he was, you know, he, you know, he, he, he had to like really, really pull Vagar back. Cause Vagar was like, fuck it. I'm going, I'm going in. I, I will upgrade it to decent chomping. And, 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 uh, Eamon was like, that was the first time. I think, I don't think we've seen Eamon actually have fear in his eyes like that. Uh, in, in, in the two, in the two seasons that we've, we've known this character. 
I mean, he was legit like, we got, it was like, peace out. We got to get out of here. So um, I would have agreed with you, but I did see a tweet go out that had a shot of Eamon and how he looked after he killed Luke versus Eamon and how he looked after he um, tried to kill Aegon. Yeah, but I think the when he killed when he killed Luke, I don't think it was fear. I think it was just like it was more like, oh crap, what is, what have I done? Well, to me, that's like a little bit of fear. I mean, like the fear of what you've done. Well, yeah, I mean, I I, I could see that. Anyways, <laughs> like like my my point point being is like I I saw those, so so mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the first time. Yeah. Um, that we've actually seen fear. I think it's been a while, though. I don't think. I think maybe this is the first time in season two, but I think that he just—he's like his uncle. Yeah. He doesn't understand the crown. Yeah. Um. And and but but it's also not like Renera does too. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, well, but, she's she's yeah, I think she's but we've seen her mature into it better you know i think she and she's you know she has her kitchen and cabinet with masaria as her hand to help her masaria's in her hand no, but I'm just, her hand. i know Corliss is her official hand but then she has like what i mean by kitchen cabinet is like the people you know the she, it's like she may not be she can't sit at the council table but she's just as much an advisor more so i think she's more of an advisor than her than her council at this point yeah i just feel like Friendships like those have gotten in Renera in trouble in, in the past, being of royal court. So I don't, I I I agree she's maturing and she she's better than Aemon, but I I don't I don't know if she um is fully prepared for the crown either. And I think I think that's what they've subtly done this season is. A lot of Rhaenyra's uh, struggle is mirrored because of her her struggle in her marriage. Yeah. yeah to her yeah. uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> Man, you, you know, maybe this is just an incest thing, like, and that's why they can't trust those of the main bloodline because the main bloodline, it's all a you know, like it's inner anyway. I'm not gonna go <laughs> any further. <laughs> All I'm saying is the families who don't incest, they don't seem to have this problem. Okay, uh, <laughs> they yeah, don't yeah. breed and they don't have this problem. That's, they that's don't. It. They don't. Yeah, a little, little, little more stability in their yeah. mental, yeah. mental a stability bit more. there. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Um, anything else about the penultimate episode of season two? I uh, know just uh, there, there uh, nothing about the episode, but there was another uh, release of uh, scenes for the finale. That was, I guess, there was a uh, making our way around social media. So be careful. I think HBO is working hard to to get them struck stricken from like all the all the various platforms. But uh, yeah, if you don't want to get spoiled, then uh, don't uh, you know. If you, be very, very careful as you tread on TikTok or Facebook or, you know, whatever social media platform of choice. You've had your warning. Now, Will, tell our listeners where they can find you. Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.